now we pay our attention to cylindrical polar coordinates uh, this is merely an extension of uh, polar coordinates in r2 now uh, this system is important this coordinate si coordinate system is important uh, when we are dealing with cylindrical objects okay now uh, if you take this uh, diagram if you consider this diagram uh, you can locate a point in r2 on xy plane uh, where the distance from the origin to the point is rho and this angle is theta it is exactly the polar coordinate system now if you have any point uh, in the space p right you project that point to xy plane and then you write this point on xy plane in polar coordinates right so if you have any point p in the space in r3 you project that point onto xy plane now the point you get after projection you write that point in terms of polar coordinates so if the distance is rho this is theta so x is rho cos theta y is you know rho sin theta as in polar coordinates and the third coordinate is said is simply is it so the uh, the relationship between rho theta and is it are given like this x is rho cos theta y is rho sin theta is it this is it again let me tell you what it is if you have any point in the space you first project it onto xy plane then express that point because since it is on xy plane you can express it in polar coordinates right so if the distance is rho and this angle is theta this is rho cos theta and y is rho sin theta and is it stays as is it now if you uh, look at the directions along which you change only one variable like if you take rho if you move along this line segment further away from the origin a uh, rho increases but theta remains fixed and is it this zero fixed therefore if you move along this direction you can simply change rho without changing the other two so that's the unit vector along that direction Simi sim simply uh, like in the polar coordinates without changing the uh, changing the value of rho as well as is it you can increase theta by moving along this direction by keeping the same radius you can further move this way on x y plane uh, without changing rho and is it by doing so you simply increase the value of theta and that is theta hat theta hat means the unit vector or theta hat stands for the unit vector uh, along which theta increases while rho and is it remain intact they don't change now on the other hand if you take is it right at this point let me uh, project these vectors up this rho hat theta hat hat is in this direction and if you want to increase is it without changing the other two variables you have to go this way right that is is it hat now if you write the same diagram here you have it here right this one for the sake of clarity let's write it again now this if you compare it with x y z system now this how the right hand coordinate system persist like from x to y right if you take a screw driver and rotate it in this direction the head moves in this way the handle moves in this way so that's the third axis so we call it as x y z system from x to y you rotate a screw driver the uh, handle goes in this way 
but that is the, the from the first and the second uh, coordinates uh, coordinate axis you can get the third one. Similarly, from rho to theta if you rotate in this direction if you take a screwdriver and rotate in this direction it moves in this way that is z hat. So, z should be the third coordinate rho should be the first like in the x y z theta should be the second z should be the third. Now, after that let us try to find the infinite symbol uh, or, or the volume of the infinite symbol element. Now, as I told you earlier this is merely an extension of the polar coordinates. So, in polar coordinates you know that when you have rho you give a little increment in rho hat direction. So, this uh, delta rho uh, this angle is delta theta. Now, you know what this is from the arc length this arc length should be rho times the angle d theta sorry delta theta and if you project this up you have the same shape if you project it onto a horizontal plane you have the same shape. Now, you give an increment to z that is d z. So, you have the object like this hmm? again if I want to write this you get you get some no I think I do not need to do it this d I mean delta rho this one this length is from the arc length you know that radius times the angle rho delta theta this should be I will write delta theta rho delta theta this delta rho this height is I will write delta z delta z. So, the volume should be what volume should be rho delta theta then this length is this uh, like a cube uh, cuboid delta rho delta z. Now, as delta rho goes to 0 delta theta goes to 0 and delta z goes to 0 you can replace them by d theta d rho and d z respectively. So, if you multiply them like this this is the volume of the infinitesimal element that is how it should appear in the integral. Hmm? Okay. Now, uh, we will uh, do an example using cylindrical polar coordinates. Now, find the mass of this object this is a portion of a cylinder right it is only in the first, first octant uh, radius is 2 height is 3 and it is the, this angle is only 90 because it is between x and y axis in the first octant. So, it should be 90 degrees uh, the density is given by this one this expression. Now, the volume of the infinite symbol element is this as we saw up there hmm, the volume of the infinite symbol element you have like d x d y d z or delta x delta y delta z you have those product of those deltas, but you get a scale some uh, multiples there some you get a you get rho. So, rho times the product of these three all right you have this, but that is the volume of the infinite symbol element. Now, we need to find the mass when it comes to mass we have to multiply it by its density. So, this is the density at a given point. So, density times the volume gives you the mass of the infinite symbol element. Now, the this is a little mess because we have all four variables in the expression. So, we need to replace x and y by rho and theta. So, this is how we do it uh, x, we know that we saw it earlier again let us go back uh, to where we first introduced the cylindrical polar coordinates. So, x is rho cos theta y is rho sin theta it is the same as polar coordinates, but z is z. Now, you can see that uh, I replace x by rho cos theta. So, you get rho squared cos squared theta here you get rho squared sin squared theta. When you pull out rho from these two hmm, you get cos squared plus sin squared which is 1 then the square root of rho squared is rho. 
So, this 1 plus rho, this whole thing is equal to rho. You have one rho left out. So, it is this and that is what you get as the volume of the infinitesimal element, sorry mass of the infinitesimal element. Now, what are the limits? When we want to find the total mass, you definitely you have to go through a triple integral. So, we need to know the limits of these variables. You know rho is the, I mean in this area, in this volume, rho goes from 0 to 2. So, that is wha what I have indicated here. The in this volume, rho goes from 0 to 2. The maximum distance you can achieve is 2. The maximum height you can achieve is 3. So, Z, limits of Z are from 0 to 3. It starts from 0 from x y plane up to this point, this plane. So, the limits are from 0 to 3. Then the angle uh, varies from 0 to 5 by 2, because it is in it is between uh, x y axis here. So, angle varies from 0 to 90. So, it is there. Now, total mass, uh, so let, the, let this volume be V. So, in V, that is why I have introduced the V there, without uh, exactly indicating the limits. In V, this is what you have the, I mean this is what you have for the mass. Now, let us assign the limits. Limits of rho from 0 to 2, limits of theta from 0 to 5 by 2 here, limits of Z 0 to 3. Now, uh, you can integrate this one, you have rho squared over 2, rho cube over 3, assign the limits. After that, once you assign limits, you know uh, rho is equal to 2. So, 2 squared over 2 is 2, 2 cube is 8, 8 over 3 which is 14 over 3. Now, we introduce a pair of braces just to make it little clear. Uh, now, the variable of integration is theta. So, you can go back there. This is a constant 14 over 3 times theta, right? 14 over 3 times theta. Uh, then, the limits of theta are from 0 to 5 by 2. So, 0 to 5 by 2. Hmm. Now, uh, when you plug in 5 by 2, we will end up with this one. When you plug in 0, it is 0. So, you can ignore that term. So, this is what you get. After that, it is a simple integration. You simplify it, then integrate it. Variable is Z. Now, uh, you plug in the limits 0 to 3. So, first you plug in 3, then you plug in 0 you will end up with 75 kilograms. Okay, thank you.